This is Lee Ridley. Uh, I was lucky enough to achieve two promotions with Scunfort United, but nothing compares to the joy I experience when listening to the Aryan Hour podcast. Just a heads up, this podcast contains strong language. You know the good stuff. If this isn't for you, turn off now. For the rest of you, now fucking enjoy the podcast. Good evening, everyone, or good morning, or good afternoon, or whenever you're uh, listening or watching this. Uh, I'm Max Bell. This is the uh, this is the Iron Hour podcast. Uh, I'm your standing host, uh, your usual thinner host. Um, Andy Barraclough Clough is away, shouting at some lads while they punch themselves in the face. Um, MC in a boxing card, apparently, but basically that's what he does. Uh, so I'm joined by two fabulous guests this evening. We've got the usual Italian stallion, everybody's favourite bald git. Marco, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, we've been a, been a little while since we've done a pod. We and me and you missed the. Um... The Glyn pod from last week, which was great. So fair play to Barrow and uh, and Gareth for getting that done. It was nice to hear Glyn and all his stories. But yeah, the uh, the popular kids are back for this one. <laughs> Definitely. And I, I can think of nobody more popular than a very well-known Iron fan and a very special guest for this evening, Jamie Morgan. How are you doing, Jamie, mate? Yeah, I'm absolutely fantastic, mate. Um, it's absolutely privileged privilege to be here. Oh, you, you're too kind, um, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll discuss it in more detail later, but Jamie was one of our excellent sponsors um, of the recent Iron Hour Podcast 11 fundraising match we did up at Glanford Park, so as, um, as, a, as a thank you for his, his generosity and his, and his support, um, not just financially, but vlogging the day as well, um, we've, we've invited him along, basically, so uh, thank, thank you for coming, Jamie. Welcome. Uh, thank, th- yeah, thank you, lads, as well. Um, it just means everything to me that I've been able to do something amazing for our football club. And, yeah, that's what we all love, isn't it? We all love this football club. So, yeah. thank you very much, lads. Excellent. I um, I, I think that the mentioned, what you mentioned there, sorry, Jamie, in terms of loving the football club, I think that's a, I think that's a very good segue because, um, you know, as a, as, a, as a team, really, we wanted to start this podcast on a very... Um, very important, but quite sombre note and sort of mark that the recent passing of perhaps one of the, one of the greatest Mr. Scunthorpe's really, um, Mr. Raw Chickens himself, John Staff, will will have all seen the, the recent tributes paid about him and his, and his life's work and his 60 years volunteering at SUFC by both the club on social media, but ordinary Fans, ordinary, ordinary people of Scunthorpe, um, on a, on a very personal level. Now, I've had multiple people come up to me this last week, um, and sharing great stories about his his time at Scunthorpe Steelworks, both in the boss plan and also on um, as an instructor up at the Steelworks. I've I've, I've heard some great stories about him teaching people to uh, be a forklift operator, drive a crane. Which um, yeah go, goes to show really just how much of a mark that um, that the staff has made across all of Scunthorpe over the for the last seventy five years really. Um, Jamie, I know you've been following the Iron home and away for oh more years than you and I w- would care to remember. Have you um, have you got any got any favourite memories of staffing? Yeah, absolutely. There's honestly there's so many memories that I could literally pick out. But um, the the one thing for me, and um, it's slightly a little bit away from football. Well, actually, no, it's not away from a little bit away from football. It's totally with football. But um, there was a college project I did. Um, I did an in, in English presentation. Um, it's about a subject that that people love, and for me, it was with Scunthorpe United. So for the uh, presentation I did. I, uh, with permission with John, used like a lot of um, a lot of notes that uh, that he'd written down um, because I'd literally prepare for about three or four months for it as well. Um, so I literally had a lot of John's history with like with Scunthorpe United, um, and I literally put it all together and I had to do it in front of the classroom. So um, yeah. Um, that's literally this is literally on top of a lot of memories I have with John because he was such a passionate Scunthorpe United fan, and as we all know, um, uh, yeah, um, I've got amazing, 
memories of that. And I feel so thankful for John for allowing me to use uh, Scuffle and I's history for it. So um, that was John right down to a T. Like he had so much time for everybody. Um, no matter, you know, I mean, no matter who was talking to him, he just had so much time for everyone. So, uh, mm. yeah, literally, like John bless him, just absolute legend of this football club. He's literally the heart and soul of it. So, yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more, Jamie. And I, I think I can, you know, I would, I could think of no greater tribute than the fact that in a hundred years' time, people are still going to be benefiting from and and using like the work of John Staff and the amazing work he's not he's not just done on Scunthorpe United, but also his amazing archival work on soldiers from all across North Lincolnshire who, you know, who died and fought for our country and for freedom in, in World War One and, and World War Two. On on a very personal note, um I was fortunate enough to to see John a, a couple of times while he was battling cancer, um once up at Scunthorpe General Hospital and once, once at his home in, in Botsford, and you know he was he was mentally sharp right right until the end. Um, unfortunately, I I think everyone really has got personal experiences of of cancer being and being an absolute bastard, really. Yeah. Um, so to, to to folks out there, particularly men who can can often be a bit wary about getting symptoms checked or just brushing off health issues or health concerns, you know. I, I, I would say really, really do do go and get checked. Don't don't be afraid of, of bad news because the earlier you catch stuff like that, the better chance we've got of Scunthorpe fans and, and our families and our friends be, being here for a very long time. So, uh, yeah, on, on behalf of the team, our, our sort of our thoughts and our condolences go out to um, to his wife Christine, his, his three sons and their um, their grandkids at this um, th- this very difficult time. Yeah, uh, Staffy mate, you'll um, you'll be missed. Absolutely. On um, it's 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 rather difficult to to follow that. Um, but in, in terms of Iron fans, we do have slightly more positive news about Martin Maidment, um, who Iron fans will know is a, again a really big Scunthorpe fan who um, unfortunately was taken ill away at Gloucester, which was the Iron's final game of the of, of the regular season. He's since been transferred from Bristol to be closer to his family up at, up at Lincoln Hospital which is which is really really good news um, and uh, Marco I know you've got um, you've got an update on these um, on the fundraiser for Martin as well haven't you yeah so um, obviously we was doing the not the charity game so we've done the charity game for Evie um, then last week we've done the charity game to raise money for Scunthorpe um, and then obviously throughout this season we raised well we didn't raise we sponsored uh, Clunan's shirt um, I know a lot of other people have sort of raise money for the club and for various charities and it's a lot of people are doing it now but what we're going to do is we're going to um, get rid not get rid <laughs> auction off the shirt uh, clean the shirt and we're going to raise some money for uh, for Martin um, and his family just to support another Scunthorpe fan um, we feel like it's the least we can do just helping another Scunthorpe fan out um, so that will be going on in time we are just waiting to receive the shirt um, which will be signed from Clunan himself um, so yeah Keep your eyes out, peeled for that, and uh, if you can, please don't X. It's um, again, it's going to go towards something we're going to help another scum for fan out who's in need. And um, yeah, we just we, as a podcast, uh, I'm, I'm sure Jamie as well. We wish him all the best, and uh, the quicker he gets out, the better. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'd, re- I'd I'd really echo um, Marco's thoughts there. So so do keep an eye on the uh, podcast socials, um, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in a future podcast as well when that um, auction of Clunan's shirt goes live um, for anybody who's not seen that the fundraiser that Martin son Ben has done it's been to sort of help the the family with travel costs you know they were going down to Bristol and back for a really long time that's what we'll and be we'll be putting it towards that yeah yeah absolutely we're, we're going to put a link to the fundraiser in the description for this as well and um, I would say at the time of recording they've also got a, an upcoming fundraising cricket match up at uh, Grimmelby Cricket Club on Sunday the 2nd of June. Uh, they're playing Louth Cricket Club. There's going to be a barbecue, a raffle, a bar. It's at 1 o'clock on Sunday the 2nd of June. So if any, any of you have a free afternoon on Sunday, get yourself down to Grimmelby Cricket Club. The forecast for the weather is really good. Enjoy the sun. Um, I know Marco hates cricket. But I was just about to say, 
<laughs> yeah, but, yeah, guys, guys, for all you normal Scunfort fans who think cricket is shite, there's a bar. <laughs> there is a bar. Um, so, yeah, even if it's not for you, get down, sun shining, I'm sure there'll be beers. And again, uh, just like we're going to do, let's raise some money. Let's uh, let's help each other out. So we've, we've shown how good we are at stuff like this. But, but yeah, yeah, let's talk about Scunny. <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Marco. <laughs> it's so, not for work our calls. So. Yeah. Absolutely, Jamie, absolutely. So that, that brings us on to some of the news that we've had in the last sort of two to three days, both of players departing the club, but also some some retaining as well. But we'll start with the on-field departures. So in the last 72 hours, we've had it confirmed that Regan Ogle, uh, Jacob Butterfield and Danny Elliott are all, are all departing the club. Uh, Jamie, what was your um, what was your reaction when you saw that news? Um, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really uh, too shocked about it. Um, the only reason being that we've got to make cuts to the uh, wage budget. I'm not saying that the three players in question were asking for a load of money or anything like that. Um, unfortunately, with the situation. That we've been in since October. I think there's been uh, a case of um, just too many like tough decisions for the club having to make right now. Um, just just in terms of budgets and stuff like that. Mm. Um, like I say, it's nothing on the players whatsoever. Like I'm, we don't we don't know doing what they've been offered or what they've asked for, etc., etc. Um, Obviously, with the three that like, that's been named, um, let's say Butterfield, Ogle, and Elliot, they are massive losses, really. Um, like, literally, not gonna lie about it. They are massive losses, but we've got to sort of understand where we're at, at this point. And um, yeah. since October, it's been a real uphill battle to keep this football club alive. So we've got to really try and. Um, Manage things and get to a sustainable level. So um, that's that's my take on it, pretty much. Yeah. So obviously, Marco, there's there's a bit to go at there. Um, I would say a couple of things really. Obviously, um, Ogle's been a sort of a, a rare bright spot. He's he's heading a division that he's higher. He's going up to the uh, the national league. It's been confirmed that he's signed a deal with Oldham. If there are any Oldham fans listening, what, what kind of player would you say that he's getting? Oh, uh, regarding Ogle, I know there will be one Oldham fan listening because uh, Pete's a regular listener. But yeah, um, just what I said to him, really, uh, you're going to get 100%. Um, I don't think he's the finished article by a long way. Um, but like you said, in a couple, well, a few very poor teams, he has been the, um, the bright spark, the... Uh, the one that has stood out. So I remember I was going, I remember I was playing York and um, my friend who is an older fan came with me that day and he was really impressed with him. Um, obviously he's a very attacking fullback, sometimes can get caught out defensively, but again, it's National League. You, you haven't got the finished articles at this level. Um, very physical. Um, I'd say maybe playing a back three as well. But yeah, Ogle, Ogle's going, I think, there's not many people who have a bad word to say about him. But as Jamie said, regarding cost cutting, he's a right back. Um, they are replaceable. It's not a 20 goal season striker. Um, in this league, they are replaceable. It's a shame we didn't get a fee. Um, because obviously previous years we know Oldham have been interested in um prior to this. So that's the only sort of thing I am a little bit annoyed about. But no, Ogle goes with um with my blessing, and I hope he has a really good career and smashes it. Yeah, definitely. And I'm 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 sure I'm sure we will. Um so obviously we've we've touched on Ogle there. There's also been news about um Jagger Butford and Danny Elliott. Again, um just a couple of statements that have been released regarding Jagger Butford that I'm gonna gonna read to you, Marco. Um one from um Mrs. Butterfield, as it were. Lucky uh, lady. Very lucky lady. <laughs> 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 Can't really add anything to that, can I? <laughs> um, who's, who's, who's put a post um, up on Facebook on the Scunlum United fans group. I'm sure a lot of fans will have seen, but for those of you who haven't, I'm, I'm going to try and quickly summarise it here. 
Um, she mentions a little bit about the family dog uh, and then goes on to say, and I quote, at the time of your post, Jacob was still hopeful of reaching a deal with Scunthorpe that would have allowed him to remain at the club he has completely fallen in love with. Unfortunately, it was clear very early on that Jacob was never really in the new manager's plans and that was reflected by him being offered one of the lowest contracts of all the players who were offered new deals. A contract which represented a 65% pay cut, in brackets, the greatest by far of any other player, close brackets, and would have put him on only a fraction more than the national minimum wage with significant travel costs to also absorb. It was an impossible position for Jacob to be able to negotiate from, and despite his best efforts, he has been forced to leave with a very heavy heart. Not for money or to play at a higher level, but to play at a club where he hopes to feel valued by the management. Jacob wishes nothing but the best for the club and the brilliant supporters who've made his time at Scunthorpe United truly unforgettable. Now, I would stress that there's always at least two sides to every story um, and we haven't seen any kind of reaction or, or response from the club to that statement. Um, I, I, we, I, we may do, we may not do. Um, but Marco, how, um, how does that statement make you feel? What's your reaction to that? Sad. How sad. Um, I think Butterfield's bought so many people so much joy um, these last couple of seasons and picked us up when when we sort of needed it. Um, <clears throat> again, that doesn't mean I understand football. I understand the position we're in at the minute. And if if he's not in Butler's plans, then he's not in Butler's plans. It's it's just one of those things. Um, he's the new manager, and we're going to have to trust him. But um, not just Butterfield, this whole team, obviously we're losing a few players now. We need to remember in the dark times, these these guys went without wages um, in the GoFundMe, but obviously ourselves and the other podcast brew um, and obviously a number of people contributed to Butterfield get £500. Um, and people forget that. Do you know what I mean? He is, he is one of the good guys. Um, that whole squad are good. So before we start talking about money, and th- these are really good guys, but from a footballing perspective, Butler has to do what's best. Um, and if that's the case of him not feeling like Butterfield's part of his plans, then so be it. But from a personal point of view, Butterfield is gutting. It is absolutely gutting. Uh, just because the thing is, no matter who we sort of bring in, I don't think I don't think we're going to get that quality. Um, obviously, we know Butler's come into the twilight of his career. Uh, that's no secret. But what he could do with a ball, um, we've not seen for a long time at Granford Park and when he gets the ball when there's no player 30 yards out that you'd bat more than Jacob Butterfield and uh, no that one hurts um, a lot more so than Ogle because he's just brought so many good memories um, he's a top guy and he's obviously it's hurt his girlfriend too it seems like he loved the club he was settled at the club um, I know when sort of we were raising money and Dab- a few Derby fans came to the game um, I was speaking to one of them and they really was amazed how much we were fond of him because they couldn't stand him. <laughs> and so it just it just shows that some players they, they sort of they fit in. They fit in at one club rather than another and he definitely fit in at Scunthorpe. And um yeah, I get the decision if he's not in Butler's plans, but yeah, it hurts. It really does hurt. Yeah. So I, I think I would I would probably jump in on a couple of bits there. I know it's in Mrs. Butterfield's statement as it as it were. Um I I would be surprised Surprised if Butler was sort of the one managing those negotiations, really. That the days of the likes of um, either Sir Alex Ferguson or, you know, closer to home, Brian Laws, managing absolutely everything at the club. Across football, really, nowadays, th- those days are gone, rightly or wrongly. Um, I suspect it would probably be people higher up in the club organisationally than, than Butler. But yeah, I, I would share your. Um, Share your disappointment, really, because he was a, he was a massive asset for us in central midfield this season. Um, just on one final note on, on Jacob Butterfield before we um, before we move on, he's personally released a statement as well, which again for um, for any Iron fans who haven't seen it, I'm um, just going to read out now. It says, "Dear Scunthorpe United, um, with great disappointment, my time at SUFC has come to an end." but I cannot go without sending this message of gratitude for the enormous support that I've received during my time at your club. I felt huge adoration, adoration from Iron fans of all generations in the last two years. 
And along with the turmoil, we, we've all had to endure. This has made my connection with the club incredibly strong. Uh, with this in mind, I feel it's important to let you know it was always my desire to stay at the club for future years. However, despite my best efforts, it wasn't to be. I hope I've left you with some good memories and that you enjoyed watching me play as much as I enjoyed playing for you. Hearing your rendition of Butterfield is Magic whilst walking onto the pitch with my two boys will be something that I never forget. Thank you to all of my teammates, managers and the club staff. It's been a pleasure to work with you all. Wishing you nothing but success for the future and hoping our paths will, paths will cross again one day. Thank you, Jacob Butterfield. And um, yeah, football can be a bit of a remorseless business sometimes, but um, it, it's hard not to get at least a little bit emotional reading reading statements like that. Um, obviously, there hasn't yet been a, a new club confirmed for uh, for Jacob Butterfield yet. I know there's been a few rumours that York are interested, um, but wherever he ends up going and whatever he ends up doing, I, I'm sure that, um, that us as a podcast, but also every Iron fan will um, be wishing Jacob the, the very, very best. And um, yeah, I think I, I think he's still got a, at least a couple of really good years of football left in him. So um, on, on that note, um, again, quite, quite hard to follow that act really. We'll, um, we'll move on to some of the, um, some of the players who are staying um, in, in addition to the, um, in the retained list, which confirmed that the likes of um, Clunan, um, who obviously we sponsored his shirt, um, last season he's staying um, it's also been announced in the last sort of 48 72 hours that um ross barrows and finn shrimpton have signed new deals as well uh, jamie have you uh have you been down the pub celebrating that news uh yeah i thought of that actually <laughs> i've been down the pub today but uh yeah i'm actually really pleased about that you know with uh Baz and shrimpton um I think what it is for them too. I think they do real, they do add real uh, value contribution to the football club. Um, they get what it's all about. Um, they're really good at uh, what they do. Uh, I know Finn got a little bit. Well, actually, both the pair of them actually, the pair of them got a little bit um, edged out. Let's say last season they had to go out on loan and things like that. But we know what we've got them in their locker. Um, I, I'm I'm full on confident with a pair of them, and I'm really pleased that they've both signed new deals to stay here because uh, predominantly I think they're gonna really uh, gonna add something to us this season. Um, to, uh, it's literally on the few games what I saw of Ross um and Finn in this last season. From what I saw of the pair of them, I thought it was really good, and um, I think they'll both. P- build on what they've done already and hopefully a lot more game time for the pair of them and it works out and it works out totally for the pair of them as well. Yeah, I I, th- I think you're I think you're probably right. I think they are probably gonna have more game time. Um for anybody who's watching this podcast on YouTube, Jamie's perhaps having a few lighting issues. It looks like <laughs> he's um he's currently being held oh, hostage no, by a lot <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we think he's maybe currently being held hostage by uh, by a couple of Grimsby fans. Um, <laughs> oh, there we go. Bl- there we go. I'm having a little bit better. Um, <laughs> Excellent. <a> <laughs> um, Marco, obviously Jamie's hinted at a couple of things there in terms of perhaps expecting more game time for, for Barrows um, and for Shrimpton in particular. In the middle of the park, we've already had Tom Pugh, your favourite, um, and Jacob Butterfield confirmed his departing. We obviously lost Ogle, uh, which leaves Ross Barrows potentially as the, the most <laughs> senior right back still at the club. How um, how do you see them two potentially fitting into what kind of a side we we could potentially put out next season? Yeah, so it's funny you were saying that. It's like it's almost uh, scripted, but yeah. So going through, we you, we can actually put even with without the new signings, which are. According to uh, Scumfort Twitter, which I know you can't always go off, are incoming um, and are on the way. So even without the new signings, to be able to put a team, with, obviously we, we know Fitzsimmons is staying. Uh, we could put a back four of Denton uh, at this time. We we know Coogan and Boyce and Evans still aren't confirmed. So we've got three good centre-halves there. Obviously, we don't know who's staying, who's going. Yep. Uh, looks like Barrows is going to be at right back now. So that's not a back 
as a defence, that's a good unit and not too dissimilar to what we've been putting away last season anyway. Um, I know you're not Denton's biggest fan, but another year or so, he is, he's just steady Eddie and he? he'll, uh, he'll be fine. Um, so, I'm, so just ju- just on Denton, um, I think, well, certainly Ross, ha- Ross Barrows' his first half performance at home to Boston when he was having to play out of position at left back. I was stood there on the Bonnie Road and thinking... Maybe Tyler Denton's not such a bad left back after all. <laughs> but, well, to be uh, fair, sort of, sort of sort of criticism towards the end, where he, he wasn't performing well. Jimmy Dean at the time actually did say he was injured, didn't he? he was playing carrying an injury. Yeah. Um, and I remember towards the end, uh, just before the playoffs, Jimmy Dean seemed to be ecstatic that Denton didn't have to have surgery um, on an injury that was niggling him all season. So hopefully he does come back again fully fit because I think Denton's a cracking player. Um, and then, obviously, we are a bit bare bones, but a midfield of Clunan and Shrimpton sent him in. Obviously, mentioning Shrimpton's game time. Um, local lad, we all know he's good enough. He goes away on loans and does it. Similar to Pew, but obviously Pew's gone. Um, I, I do think Shrimpton could have a really good season, and it wouldn't surprise me um, to see him sort of captain, vice-captain. It really wouldn't. Um, obviously, I assume... The thing is with Butler, we don't know who's going to have captain if, if Clunan overturn the band or if he'll, if he'll move it to a centre half. Um, Jason Law, who I'm really excited to see, <laughs> have a fully have a full season, which is needed and necessary because I think he could be a cracking player and we saw glimpses of what he could do when he was fit. Uh, Roberts, again, similar to Butterfield where he's got that class and he's got that quality. Um, so hopefully he stays. Obviously, Elliot's gone, but we've got White up front. So, like, like I said, without even bringing players in, uh, which again, according, we had just uh, thought we don't have any inside knowledge of who's coming in or um, or if there is anybody coming in. So, going off that, it's not a bad eleven. Um, and again, it'd be interesting. But we've obviously sold Barrows the dream. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't sign that contract if he weren't going to play. Because I watched Kingsland versus Tamworth. Third last game of the season. Um, in the uh, false hope that we could still catch Tamworth. Um, <laughs> and he did all right. He did all right. Barrows, again, Barrows, when he's played for us, has been okay. Um, so, again, I do think we need cover. We're short, sure, obviously, Min- Minihan, Minihan. I don't know how you pronounce it. There's been mentioned a lot over Twitter, who, again, players of that ilk, um, I do think are necessary if we are thinking we're going to be up there again. Um Excuse my French, but I feel like we need three or four really nasty bastards. Um, I do think we need we need a bit of grit. We need a bit of guile. I think Tamworth had that. Um, I think we were missing that. So it'd be interesting to see who comes in. Obviously, we're short on the wings. But yeah, I, I, regarding the 11, I do think we're okay. Yeah, and I, I, I think I would agree in terms of the start of 11. We, we found a couple of points last season when we picked up a couple of injuries or suspensions in key positions. That was when we maybe had a bit of a wobble. I, yeah. I think of that time when Whitehall was suspended, um, and sort of Tamworth pulled clear, and we we never really caught them. I think of the the drop off perhaps in some of the creativity when Connor Smith went went back up to Scotland, but that, that's going to be tough. You know, it's going to be a big part of Butler's job, I suspect, running with a smaller squad, running with a smaller budget. Can he get the most out of players at his at his disposal? Mm-hmm. You know, certainly last season there was a bit of a bit of a feeling amongst other clubs, even clubs who were fighting up to the top of the table, that that financially Scunthorpe were playing a different game to them. That's going to be very different this season. So um, look, we'll 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 see what happens. We'll see what happens. But um, you know, I think a big part of the uh, a big part of the budget and a big part of the way in which you've mentioned Jamie that the club are trying to. Stay sustainable um, has been the the sale of season tickets. We, we've had some fantastic news um, put out today that the club have sold over eighteen hundred season tickets already, which is on record the most they've ever sold before the end of May, which is um is an, is an amazing achievement. Really, what would you um what would you say about the iron support, Jamie? Because that's terrific, isn't it? Yeah, that absolutely. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, to sell 1,800 plus season tickets at this level is absolutely phenomenal. And it just goes to show what um, this football club has been through. Um, well, the last few years, really. It's not even just recently, is it, really? It's been the last 
through the last last few years. Um, everyone's literally come together. Um, we've seen that the amount of danger this football club's been in and the response to it has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's been from fundraising for the football game that we had. It's been fundraising ever since back to October. Um, we was in real, real trouble. Like everyone said earlier, it's from ourselves and from the Iron Brew guys. All the supporters that came together from ourselves and other football fans across the country. We even had the Grimsby Town owners donate to it. It's been a proper, proper collective effort from everybody. And on reflection, 1,008 season tickets just shows that this football club means the world to so many people. And um, it just, yeah, I've really been a lot more positive about this club now. We're in right ownership. We've got the right people looking after us. And uh, I said on the vlog um, in the charity game, like mark my, my words on it, we're going to back to we're going to be back to where we belong. Jamie, I don't know if you've ever thought about a career in politics, but that was a great speech. Uh, it got, <laughs> got, got me a bit emotional listening to that, to be honest with you. Um, again, as, as somebody I know you've been travelling home and away with, with massive dedication in the good times, the hard times. And uh, yeah, hopefully you, yourself and everybody else will have some good times to come. Marco. Everybody. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Marco, Jamie touched on the charity game there. Now, I'm sure that Anybody who's seen the podcast socials will have, will have seen lots about this, but um, partly because we were so busy trying to organise all of that. This is this is the first time since the game that we've been able to to sit down and um, you know talk about wider issues, not just the interview with uh, with Glyn, which I would urge anybody to check out if they haven't already. So, my manager, what's your reaction? It's, it's a post match press conference. The floor's yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go full Gattuso sometimes maybe good sometimes maybe shit <laughs> but no fortunately for me uh, the teams that I well the guys I work with they're always good um, the, last week last weekend two weeks ago was it two weeks ago now I think it was ne- but, nearly what, two weeks it's not yeah, two weeks, weeks, but nearly. absolutely fantastic day again the figure of a £5,000 raised for a club um, again you, people obviously have the opinions but what we are doing is just trying to help the club as much as we can. Um, and to raise such an astonishing amount like that is beyond what we thought we could maybe do. We thought, even if it was a couple hundred quid, we just wanted to have a good time. We were approached by Everton Supporters Group. Massive shout out to them, because without them, it was, it was their idea. Um, they'd approached a lot of teams, a lot of people, and nobody wanted to do it. But yeah, it was good to see the Atis Arena with a healthy crowd. Um we raised five thousand pounds. The bar was busy. I know I sold a lot of food. And end of the day, I don't lose. I don't lose. I put a team out to win. Uh, the boys were fantastic. <laughs> Full credit to the Everton guys because, again, without them it couldn't happen. Um, but yeah, a, a thoroughly enjoyable day. One I remember for a long time, and I'm just really glad we could. Um, like I said, we just want to help the club any way we can. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I think there's there's so many people we can thank here. Um, oh. I give a I give us I give a special shout out personally to everybody's favourite Becky, yeah, who did an absolutely outrageously f- phenomenal work. And at um, time of recording this podcast, it's it's actually Becky's birthday. So uh, on behalf of the Iron Hour podcast, happy birthday, Becky! Um, I'm sure, you're out away having a ball somewhere, um, possibly sunny Bedford, but um, yeah. Obviously, um, we, we thanked the Everton supporters group there. What was what was the score, Marco? What was the score? Eight two. Correct. Some would say a drubbing, um, and I continue my unbeaten record as the Iron Hour Eleven manager. I just want to wrap Paul Grimes. I want to freeze Paul Grimes. Can I do that? <laughs> and just reel him out for the charity games because he is a hell of a player. Um, Big shout out to Jamie Marius because obviously we had a prize for Man of the Match as well. Um, for his sponsors, who sponsored Jamie? Me. Oh, you Jamie! <laughs> but not only did Jamie sponsor the game, he also had the Man of the Match. Legend. <laughs> Jamie's all, must have had a lot of money because I think he's also paid the ref off. 
Um, but no, it was a, an amazing day. And anybody there, obviously, we've received so much positive feedback from both the club. Michelle came down, which, again, massive thanks to Michelle, um, handing out the trophies. And one, I know Max has given a few shout-outs already, but one huge shout-out to Stuart. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Amazing. So much money through the, through the raffle. Um, it was there on the day, giving his time. Um, everybody was selling tickets. Me and Barry went and met them. But, but, again, it's not just us. We're just an extension. Jamie mentioned it with the season ticket sales. We have such an amazing fan base. Um, and what we can do is fantastic. So it was so good to see. And uh, I'm sure it won't be our last. So, yeah, fingers crossed there'll be another game in the near future. Not for a while, though, because it was... Uh, it was a lot. <laughs> I remember seeing on Twitter people saying, please, God, no, not another uh, charity game post. But do you know what? He can bore off. Five five. <laughs> it's going for you, uh, Shove that where the sun doesn't shine. And actually, as well, I, I think the, the, the pitch hires as a whole have been an, a, a huge success. Yeah, it's covered the, covered the cost for the new pitch, which, uh, my God, was necessary. Um, yeah. So, again, ho- hopefully... With some nice football played on it. Um yeah. but yeah, no exact like, credit to the club. I know a lot of clubs don't do that. And it, to mm. me, it just makes sense. Um if you are relaying the pitch, um I forgot the name of a company who are actually currently doing it. Is it pitch links? Yes. Check. Keep, keep keep talking. I'll check. Yeah. Pitch yeah. Link, I, I did it, see it, the video on Facebook. It is pitch links. Yes. Oh, pitch I'll... links. And it looks fantastic. Well done, uh, well done Jamie. That's that's why you're here. He's, he's our live <laughs> fact checker, is Jamie. Yeah. I, so, I did see it this morning. So, yeah. It, it, yeah, it looks well fantastic. Said. So, let's hope that, that um, that's all well good. It's something we needed. Uh, and again, not just doing the podcast game. People obviously getting the use of the pitch has paid for that and covered that. So, it's good business from the board and a new pitch, which. I look forward to seeing. Yeah, abso- absolutely. And I know, um, obviously, Marco and I both played in a in a different game as well. Um, I I managed one, so it was it's honestly terrific to see so many so many charities, so many groups of fans, like youth football clubs, real community involvement um, in in what in the first game, which was a couple of weeks before the the podcast game. I made like a sliding block and cut my knee for a week. And I remember thinking, think of the players who've hurt themselves on that pitch. What fabulous company we've we've been in over the years. So, uh, yeah, I, I think on behalf of the whole team, we just say thank you to everyone who donated. Thank you to everyone who come down. Um, you know, the club said they thought there was nearly three hundred people there. Yes, yeah, the, the three of us have been in plenty of away ends for proper <laughs> games that have been smaller than that. Yeah. Um, thank you to everyone who who, who shared it on Twitter and um, yeah. Thank you to Barra for putting the programme together. Yeah. Um, it was really good that we were able to share sort of nice messages about John Staff and, and Martin Maidment. And um, yeah. yeah, we hope to do something something again soon, I'm sure, in the, in the coming months. But a, a fabulous effort. Well well done, everyone. Well done. Give, give yourselves a clap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well done, everybody. Well done. Um, so, obviously, we've covered quite a bit there. It's the end of the season well, we've got more football coming in the summer, but we'll um, we'll, we'll get to that later. Marco, regular regular sent sent regular segment rather. As our FPL king, the floor is yours. Give us give us an end of season roundup. What's happened? Right, so first place. Well, I'm going to do the top five because it was a huge league. Um, <laughs> we over two hundred so many... people, I think. Yeah, we had so many more people than we actually thought would. End there. So thank you. It's definitely something we'll do again uh, next season uh, because, again, the response was fantastic. But a massive well done to our winner, Travis Gallagher, um, who topped, topped the league this season, which, again, is some going because it's been a quite a good standard this year. So I will read out the top five. So I've got Travis Gallagher in one, Martin Jewick in two, who was top for the last few weeks. He did really well, but just got pipped on the last day, I think. Then we've got Jack Freister, who was up there for a long time as well. Right. I, I know, We went through this every week. It's not Chrysler, it's Christa. <laughs> I, I, thought it, I thought I said it was Christa, but it's Christa. Oh, who cares? You anyway, it, Jack. well done, <laughs> Jack. <laughs> uh, Steve Radley and another Steve, Steve Bett. Um, so they're the top five. And again, massive, massive well done because it's... Uh, been a really good standard this year. So excellent. So obviously we've got we've got Jamie as a, as a special guest. Jamie, wait, let's have a guess. Where do you think you can? 
Wow. Um, all I can remember, honestly, is that I won the very first week of this. Uh, <laughs> you actually got a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Legend. Yeah. That's well, literally well said, the Jamie. moment I took all season. So, uh, Jamie's done well off his podcast. <laughs> give us, so, give, as a prediction for my uh, for my position, I will say, oh, I don't know, ninety seventh. Marco, go on. Where did Jamie finish? Do you need to scroll and check? I don't think he's got top hundred. Um, <laughs> go, on, have, go and have a look. We'll buy time while you scroll. <laughs> okay. um, but no, well, was I too optimistic on ninety seven? You think you think that's something I'd have known, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, it's all right. It's it's. What people want in podcasts is they want authentic. You know, they don't want too slick, too I'll just see how rub- rubbish I am. <laughs> well, um, on on a very serious note, thank you to everyone for taking part. I know it's been yeah. a it's been quite an entertaining way just to keep track of the of the of the Premier League and other bits and bobs that's been happening away from Sunderland United this season. Yeah. As Marco said, we'll still scroll in. Oh, drums rolling! He's found Jamie. Go on, still oh, scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's still scrolling. Okay, well, we'll come back to Marco there. Well, yeah, we'll, 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 we had over two hundred people in this in this league this season. Mark Marco's wincing. Go on, Marco. So, Jamie's <laughs> final position one hundred and sixty six. A good effort, Jamie. A good effort. Plenty of people. Oh, well, did worse it's not. It's that. not bottom. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely nowhere near the bottom. Um, <laughs> Marco, what about the um, what about the podcast regulars? I'm I'm pretty optimistic on this front. Yeah, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> you know this. Uh, to be fair, Max has pulled it out of a bag. Where did he finish? Uh, it was in the mid to low twenties. I want to say 29th. Max Bell has finished. Oh, I can't I can't see no Max Bell here. Like 34th. Oh. I'm happy with that. Oh, so Max has won, well, Max won the, uh, the podcast mini league because I was in 70th. Them two were in the abyss. I'm not even yes. going that far down. Um, Excellent. But yeah, no, it was a good laugh. Some people definitely yeah. do again next season. Um, definitely. And it, I, yeah. we'll, we'll see as to whether or not it's logistically possible. But um, if it's something we can do for the Euros, we'll, uh, we're going to look into it. Yeah, there um, is one. There is a Euros one. So okay, well, um, I, we'll we'll we'll, yeah, we'll see what we can um, we'll see what we can do. And a little this. pre-tournament tip uh, is Italy should probably win this one. Uh, <laughs> but one of many Italians in there as you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously, we're getting to, we're getting to that st- we're getting to that stage of the summer. Um, so where I fall out with the whole of England. Again. <laughs> um, I, I, I just want it just want it on record that if um, if Marco goes missing this summer, um, search the canals of Cologne because <laughs> one of us one of us may have pushed him in by accident. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm I'm going to be a, a mess over there because I can't give anyone any stick because we're playing Spain and um, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough right. game. So we're we're going to wrap up with two things very very briefly. Obviously, we've had um, we've had a bit of discussion about the, the players coming in and out at Scunthorpe United. And hopefully, as, as Marco mentioned, there's still a few rumours flying about about new players coming in. Nothing's been confirmed yet. So these kind of uh, these kind of conversations will keep going over the summer. But right now, gun to your head, Jamie. Keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Where do you think Scunthorpe United will finish next season? You can change your predictions before the end of the season, but yeah. right now... Time of recording, May 31st. Where do you think? Right. I'm going to be really optimistic. Like, uh, for me, I think I think we're going to finish in, in the playoffs. Okay, go on. Give, give me a number. Second, third, fourth, fifth? Um, fifth I'll, probably go, I'll probably go second. I'll probably go second. Okay. Going to be very similar to last season. Yeah. Marco. Are you more optimistic or less optimistic than Jamie right now? Obviously, there's I'm, a less op- I'm less optimistic. Again, we don't know who's coming in. Um, as much as I love Butler, it's unproven. I hope to be proven wrong. Um, I think it's going to be a tough task. Uh, gun to my head, I'm going 10th. Very honest. Okay, I like it. And yeah, obviously, no. as you say, you know it's it's Butler's debut season really as a professional manager in, in men's football I know he had experience in the women's game at Doncaster Bells but uh, th- there can't be many managers who've come in 
their debut season and got 95 points and got side promoted, which is probably roughly about the total we'd be needing to, to finish first and win the league. So, uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll put that one on ice. We'll, we'll come back to it between now and the, the start There's of There's no way season. you're getting away without an answer. Um, <laughs> typical politician. Um, <laughs> I will go for the middle of you two. I will go for seventh. I think I could see you, I could see you sneaking into the playoffs. Um Right now, but I think that'd be yeah. a good season. I do think that'd be a good season. Um, again, I know we were joking before the podcast to uh quote the famous Peter Swan to lower our expectations, but I, I do think we do need to take a little bit of a step back. Um, last year was was a great season. Um, whether you were Jimmy in or Jimmy out, um, he did he did do a good job, but the bottom line was he didn't do the job he came in to do. Um, Butler's targets might not be the same as Dean's. Um, we've lost, we've lost obviously a few key players. So I, again, playoffs would be a good season. And, um, let's hope we can achieve it. Excellent. Yeah, completely, completely agree with everything you say there, Marco. Um, so last but not least, obviously, um, I know a lot of Iron fans watching this are uh, quite big England fans as well. Apart from Marco, our <laughs> resident Italian stallion. Um, <laughs> He was already shaking his head, already I do, shaking his head. If, if, for a record, mate, I'm not public enemy number one. If Italy are, I do hope England do really well. Um, but I think the pressure is on England. That, that team is amazing. Uh, them, I think it's between them and France. But just, just to be clear, I don't hate England. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> there's Excellent. going to be people yeah. with pitchforks and players. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like that scene out of The Simpsons where there's just yeah. a wash of people in Selby with fire and sticks. I know, um, I'm going to barrage outside. Keep them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Jamie. Yeah. Euro's coming this summer. What's your, what's your prediction for England? How far are they going to get or are they going to win it all? Uh, you know what? My heart is telling me, yeah, but my heart is saying that England are going to win it. But my head what's is... Your, what, but what's, what's your head telling you? My head's telling me we're going to fall short again. I, th- okay. I, think, I think possibly in the final. Oh, if, mate, if I'm not sure I could take that level of heartbreak it would not, again. It would, honestly, in... Ollie, even like three years ago, it just would not surprise me, and it pains me to say it, we could possibly lose on penalties again. I Jesus hate to, Christ, be, I I hate to feel like that, but I, I hope my heart is right and that we just go all the way this time. There's no I, time, there's no penalties. We win the final in 90 minutes and we win like three or four nil. <laughs> Right, if we, if we win the final four 0 in ninety minutes, Jamie, uh, I don't... and then and then he woke up. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I think I woke up as well. <laughs> the thing is, out on the, passed out on the floor of Mulligan's, drunk out of his mind. You, you um, guys just need to hope that Payne gets injured because that man is a curse. Oh, I, I feel shut so up. Shut up. bad shut up. for Kane. I genuinely do. He's gone from <laughs> he's had a really good win a title, and now he's got to answer to Vincent Company. As is Gaffer. <laughs> right. I know we're going slightly off topic here. That appointment is strange. Bill, but I, I'll have this bet. They'll win the league. Vincent Gumby will win the league, man. 100%. Well, look, at Bayern Munich, I mean, I would have usually said you've got 100% chance of winning the league, but you've at least got a, a you've got a really good chance of winning the league with, you know, Mickey Mouse in charge. No, but I just think that they've sort of, again, we're going off the Euros here. I, I'll leave it, but I do think Vincent Gumby is a good manager. Um, do I think he should have got my appointment? Probably not, but I think he'll do it. Um, but Barrett will be thrilled, even when he's not here. We've accidentally uh, started discussing German football. <laughs> you Marco, like. because of your dual um, commitments, if you like, in terms of England and Italy, since you try to stay uh, stay off the mob, give me two predictions, and you can do what Jamie did if you want with like yeah, one with your heart, one with your head. Um, Again, how, I, are Italy gonna, how are Italy going to do and how Yeah, I, I don't follow England football team. I don't because I I, my, my dad's brought me up to spot Italy. Um, and I was born there. So, um, but for me, um, we it, for us, it's getting to the tournament <laughs> and we've done that. Um, so I do think anything past the quarters would be a successful tournament. If I was to guess, I'd say semis. For me, it's avoiding England and France. Um 
I think if we can do that, we can get quite far. Um, but I do think then, even with a good back four, or as Italy play, a good back six, um, <laughs> England and France would have more than enough firepower to um, break us down. Uh, regarding England, I do think we just lack that sort of that sort of smartness in a tournament, um, that sort of gamesmanship. But I do think Bellingham brings a lot of that. Um, and obviously Foden's had the season of his life. Um, England are a, a real force this year and definitely one of the, the warrant being favourites alongside France. So, but yeah, you've got your Germans, the Spanish are always strong. The, these top teams are, are always going to be good, along with the Italians. It's tournament football. So it could be anyone's. As well. I was about yeah. to say it yeah. as well. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, and as I think they're the defending champions, so you know, there's something to go out there, mate. So everyone's got respect to Italy, just pure on the principle that you you're the defending champions. Yeah, I'd 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 take quarters. We we're going through a huge transition page uh, transitional um page. <laughs> <laughs> we're up at stage. And um no, I do I do hope we can do well. Um I I'd always back Italy to do well at a tournament because it just seems to suit our style. Um, so let's hope we can. But yeah, again, I am really looking forward to Germany. Yeah, and as 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 you mentioned there, Marco, you know when as Scunny found out earlier this earlier this season against Boston, knockout football, one legged, do or die. The margins between success and failure are so fine. Whether or not it's um, the referee not giving us a penalty when um, Beast Beaston and oh, White oh, just got over that. I, I'm, still not over it. I'm still. No, you mentioned it. I didn't actually mention Beeston the eleven. Beeston could easily be um, slotted into that team as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he, it's not been confirmed yet at time of recording whether or not he's staying. But I've I've long been an advocate. I think Beeston is, is has been underrated, and then on a personal level, I, I hope he I hope he stays if the deal's right for for him and the football club. Um, but yeah. before I weasel out of a prediction, I I'm prepared to put me nose on the line and say actually I think England might win it all this summer. I think I think Bellingham has, has had an absolutely outrageous year. He's won Spanish player of the year, even ahead of Vinicius Junior. I could see him having a really big part to play in the Champions League final on Saturday. He's he, he's been terrific. Obviously you mentioned Foden as, as excuse me as, as as well there, Marco. The key for me will be the defence. you know, England have got they've got a question about left back. Um, I think Pickford actually Pickford has had a really good year in goal for Everton I think only Arsenal have kept more clean sheets than he has you know can Maguire and Stones be the partnership that they've been for England that, that's a tough question against really good quality international opposition look we'll see um, I know my, myself and Marco and a, a few of the other uh, Scunny fans podcast regulars are, um, are going out to Germany we're going to do a podcast out there, I think, aren't we, Marco? Yeah, hopefully, if uh, if I'm in a good state one day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one day, <laughs> one afternoon. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't hold your breath, guys, because I intend to sample a lot of German beer. But um... <laughs> well, look, we've we've had we've had Jamie on this afternoon, so having a couple of pints is clearly no it's clearly no barrier to being a good laugh on the podcast. Yeah, so we all that. I know we are looking forward. To, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So that will probably be our next official podcast. We'll be in Germany in Cologne. Um, yeah, or um, you know, we might we, we might try and squeeze in squeeze in one if we if we can before then. Um, the, obviously, the tournament starts two weeks tonight no. uh, with the opening game of Scotland versus Germany. So uh, yeah, it, it'll be nice to have some some football that we care about, but that's not come from United. I dare say. Yeah, we need a break. We've earned a break. <laughs> we, we do. We do need a break. And um, that's brought us to the end. Really, um, thank you very much to Marco. As always, um, yeah, you give us a wave. That's like he's part of the royal family. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much to our uh, our very special guest, Jamie Morgan. Um, as was mentioned, he did, he did a sterling job on on behalf of the podcast, sponsoring Jamie Maris, one of the players, sponsoring the game, putting his hand in his pocket, helping the fundraising efforts, and also he uh, he did a, a brilliant job covering for for Gareth on the vlog of the actual match itself. If you, if you haven't watched that, it's on uh, the Iron Army YouTube page. It's, it's a really good, really good watch. So, uh, yeah, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll, we'll hopefully see you soon. And uh, up the iron. Up the iron. Thank you.